With Dandro finally coming to the Genshin Impact live server, a lot of people are probably wondering if Dandro is good at all, what is its potential and what's the role ahead. Now today in this video, I want to talk about some of Dandro's problem that we're currently observing and how it hinders Dandro's potential a little bit, as well as area where Dandro could work really well and what is its biggest potential. In other words, I want to talk about Dandro on a more fundamental level, like what kind of application does it have and how does the element react with each other. I'm not really here to try to answer the question that is Dandro good or not, because I think it's too early. And so instead, we're going to be focusing on the fundamental instead, which is does Dandro work with the current existing character in Genshin Impact? And let's quickly get started. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the video. And let's start with Burning. The Burning reaction is pretty much just grief as it did get nerfed, unfortunately. The way Burning worked now is that after you apply two element reaction in a short amount of time, you extinguish the Burning completely. So within one Ganyu charge attack, you will lose your burning because Ganyu Shard Attack does it twice in terms of elemental application. Or if you're doing something like Lisa Fischl to do overload and then you do two overload like too fast, you will lose the entire burning aura. This pretty much make it so that burning is just not suitable for any kind of gameplay at all because it fundamentally doesn't apply element good enough. If you want a pyro aura on your enemy, and I know you guys are gonna hate me for saying this, but just use Xiangling. It's significantly better. So Burning pretty much have zero potential. In fact, it has negative potential because it actually dramatically negatively impact some of the other upcoming reactions that we're going to talk about. With that being said, let's talk about Quicken, which actually do have really good potential in the 3.0. Quicken is very simple and it's very straightforward to play. Probably one of the easiest reactions to play in the game as all you have to do is apply Dandro and then you can spam Electro all you want. You don't really have to care about how you apply Element when it comes down to a Quicken team. You don't really have to care about the order. You don't have to care about the timing. It is very forgiving in terms of how frequent you apply Dandro to refresh the Quicken. You just have to refresh your Dandro once every like 10 seconds and you can get a really good amount of Quicken uptime. And even if you just use the Dandro main character elemental skill, you can easily maintain very high uptime on Quicken. So that means that you can build your Dandro main character with no energy recharge at all and you're not punished for missing your elemental burst as your elemental skill can easily keep it up. So Aggravate team is extremely extremely easy to play and it opened up a really interesting new path for us which I think is really good. With that being said, Quicken team pretty much fundamentally doesn't change your play style. If you're using your official's elemental skill to apply Electro before, you pretty much use it the exact same way. You can just spam like all your skill off and on cooldown and it probably wouldn't really impact things that much. Um, I had really really good success with Kaching officials, Danjo MC and then Kazuya to do a Kaching team with 4 TF equipped on my, on my Kaching. Since Kaching do have really high high uptime on electro application with the 4 TF effect on Kaching, you can easily spam her elemental skill and when I was playing the Kaching team I pretty much just clicked the E and Q on every single one of my characters and I actually got really good results. Now I'm not gonna say things like oh Kaching is super meta now and again as a reminder this video is not to address if Dandro is meta at all. I'm simply addressing a question where does this work and the case here is that it does work. Kaching does work well with aggravate and it does have potential. The thing about Quicken team is that that it is quite restrictive when it comes to team drafting in terms of its element compatibility. Quicken team doesn't work well with Hydro or Pyro, which dramatically limit your option when it comes to your flex slot. And you will probably have trouble facing innate element enemy that by default come with an element or just trying to break shield since you can't really bring a Pyro or Hydro characters. The reason why you can't bring those characters is that they kind of just wipe your Quicken aura away. Any Pyro application would pretty much grieve your entire Quicken since if you apply pyro you will instead trigger burning which will completely eliminate all your dandro application this also means that it is not possible to trigger quicken on an enemy with a pyro element on top because as soon as you try to apply dandro it will just trigger burning and you get no dandro on top and so pyro just doesn't compatible with quicken it is completely dead on the other hand hydro face a similar but a smaller problem the problem that hydro character face in the quicken team is that they eat away your quicken or very quick depending on how fast your character apply hydro within like one or two within two hydro application i think it will eat away your quicken aura that means that it dramatically reduce your quicken up time and which defeat the purpose of trying to do aggravate on your electro characters. So unfortunately, Hydro character is also very unfavorable when it comes down to Quicken team and it's not really recommended to bring one. It could work, especially with Quick Bloom that we're going to talk about later, but I will heavily recommend if your team is trying to focus on Quicken, then don't bring a Hydro character. 
The default answer when it comes to drafting a Quicken team is just double Electro followed by a Danjo characters, finally followed by usually preferably a Animal characters to shred Pia Electro resistance. Or you can alternatively bring a third Electro character as well. Now we talked about why Pyro and Hydro doesn't work that well. Cryo have no synergies between Danjo and, and of course you have Geo character that doesn't synergize with any element at all. So between all the option, your only real option is to bring in Animal characters or a uh, third Electro characters. Another problem when it comes to team drafting processes and why it is restrictive is, to be honest, very simple, and that is there's only two Danjo Applicator in the game right now, and they're both not that great. For what it is worth, both these Danjo characters doesn't really do a lot outside of applying Danjos, and you don't really need that much Danjo when it comes to a Quicken team because you don't eat away any Danjo gauge at all, so just applying Danjo once every 10 seconds is good enough. So we're mostly looking for what other utility can these characters bring other than just applying Danjos, and in the case of like Danjo main characters, it provides you like 60 elemental mastery and that's it. So one of the bigger problems that you see recurring throughout the 3.0 patch is just that we just don't really have any Danjo characters. That's not a big problem and it doesn't really speak to the full potential of Danjo as we would expect to get better Danjo applicator or better character that will work well with Danjo reaction in the future. But for now, it is what it is. Okay, finally, let's talk about Bloom type of team. When it comes to Bloom team, our current biggest limiter is the fact that our Danjo applicator are just not very good and it's very limiting in case once again those are either Dandro MC and Kali and to be honest that's to be expected since we only have two choices and it's the very beginning of Sumeru patch but nevertheless Bloom team potential is currently very limited because of just not having good enough Danjo Applicator. One of the bigger problems, for example, when it comes to Bloom spamming team, is just our current Danjo character doesn't spam Danjo fast enough individually to trigger a lot of Bloom for Bloom spamming to be effective. And if you bring both Danjo character at once, then you essentially taking up 50% of your team slot just for Danjo applier, who really don't do much other than just applying Danjo. And so your team composition is quite limited because half of your team is just pure Danjo applier. I think you can actually have a lot of fun with Bloom spamming team when it comes to high density battle, like floor where you are facing like 10 Hilotro at once, because then you can just apply really big AOD Hydro and really big AOD Danjo to all enemy at once, which create a lot of seed at once, and therefore they start exploding very, very, very fast. But other than that, I just don't think it has high potential right now. It's a team that I would say kind of work, but it's something that I'll borderline consider doesn't really work that well. Um, when you need so many setups just to do one simple thing, that's not even super amazing. With that being said, let's talk about Hyper Bloom and Burgeon. The first thing to talk about when it comes to Hyper Bloom and Burgeon is the limitation on triggering the seed. You actually have to attack really, really close to the seed or many times directly on top of the seed in order to actually proc the seed. This makes it so that character who have bad auto targeting is not very suitable. Um, for example, Lisa's auto attack very often doesn't really proc the seed. Yomi is completely unusable when it comes down to like Virgin because her single target will always automatically track onto the enemy and so you will almost never really hit the seed. So any character that you're looking to proc the seed with are character with big AOD area like Kuki or to some extent character like Toma who can freely AOD a certain area. Starting off with Virgin, I'll give you guys the sad news right now. Shanling doesn't work at all. The reason of that is because Shanling take up two slots which are Shanling, Bennett, and are mandatory, and so your other two slot has to be Chao and Danjo main character with no possible replacement. And since Virgin take three slot at the very least, and then Shanling take two slot since the tie with Bennett, and so that is 100% locked in in terms of all four of your slot. But the problem here is that Shanling apply Pyro in too big of an area too fast. Chao have a chance of not being able to keep up with the Pyro that Shanling apply, since the Danjo application will take away a good amount of Hydro, and then Shanling will apply Pyro on top, and then your next Danjo application will actually trigger burning, which would be really terrible. You can actually fail to do any bloom at all simply because the power application is just too strong, especially in AOD area where Shanling Power Nado is really big and it can start applying power to many enemy. But Child normal attack is quite small in comparison, so you fail to apply Hydro to every single enemy that Shanling is hitting. So the end result is that some amount of enemy is gonna start burning with their Pyro Aura because both Danjo MC and Shanling just have a much bigger 
application radius than child does. And that's really, really bad as it can mess up things really fast. Because of that, Toma ended up being our only choice of off-field pirate applicator for Virgin, um, which is not too terrible since you just build full elemental mastery on Toma, which conveniently also protect you from the Virgin self-damaging, and then you can get a really good amount of AOD. One of the bigger problems with Virgin team is that it is very difficult to bring a Animo character into your party. The reason of that is because some enemy is inevitably going to start burning or just having Pyro applied onto them since your Hydro enabler probably doesn't have enough application coverage to make sure that every single enemy is always covered with Hydro aura all the time. And because Pyro have a higher swore priority, when you bring a Animo character, what will happen is that you end up swarming Pyro onto every single enemy and then your Danjo is going to come in and start triggering the burning on every single enemy and it becomes very difficult to overtake that aura and again just like the case of Shangling it completely messes everything up and you can pretty much soft lock yourself from triggering bloom which is really bad. In terms of other pyro applicator I found Klee to actually work pretty decently as well. The thing here is that you have to bring double hydro one of them preferably being Kokomi who can apply hydro in a good amount of AOD area but you do need to bring a second hydro character to make sure that Klee doesn't start overtaking the hydro and start applying pyro everywhere as she has really really fast and strong pyro application in a really big area. But other than that, um, the Kokomi AOD as well as your Danjo AOD can proc a lot of seed and then Klee can trigger them really really fast since she does have a big AOD application radius that is quite rapid and that end up giving you a really really success rate on proccing virgin in general and just do a really good amount of AOD damage. Unfortunately, it's not the same for the loot who apply pyro too slow in my opinion and just doesn't really trigger virgin fast enough. It is very common to have a lot of seed on the ground, just not having a fast way to triggering the virgin since the loot apply pyro relatively slowly. And and that's like kind of bad at the same time. Because keep in mind that even though you have five seed on the ground, if you trigger all of them at once, only two of them can do damage. So in general, when it comes to virgin team or hyper bloom team, you want to make sure that you're creating seed fast enough to utilize those reactions. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you are also proccing those seed fast enough to make sure that you are effectively utilizing it. Which is exactly why we are very, very limited on the way we can apply element because we have to do everything like they have to be in sync. Keep in mind that Hyper Bloom as well as Burgeon only scale off the character level as well as their elemental mastery. That means you pretty much have to build full elemental mastery on your trigger. Now, fortunately, your trigger is always, always going to be your pyro or your electro characters when it comes to these two reactions since they are specifically requiring free element. But that means that you have to build like a full elemental mastery Deluke. And the problem coming in is that your Deluke is just not going to do much damage otherwise in his normal attack since you went full elemental mastery. And so when you don't proc reaction fast enough to utilize your elemental mastery, it is a very poor choice of stat allocation and just not very effective. Hyper Bloom faced a similar problem where our current applicator are just too limiting. For what is worth, let's say you do a fast hydro applicator that will end up creating a hydro aura. What will happen is that your electro will come in and create electro charge. And then your danger will come in to flip aura from an electro charge to a quicken aura and instead. While it will bloom before it flips to a Quicken Aura, your next Dandro application will not react with Quicken Aura and do bloom since Quicken doesn't react with Dandro. And so what you have to do is to bring a really fast Hydro and really fast Electro Applier to make sure that you can constantly reflip the Aura. What will happen is that you start with Electro Charge, Dandro will come in to do bloom as well as flip the Aura to Quicken. You have to make sure Hydro apply really fast to do another bloom with that Quicken Aura, but also taking away the Quicken Aura at the same time. And so there's just a lot of Aura flipping and just a little messy at the current moment. And that also means that your Electro characters isn't really getting aggravated since your Quicken Aura is very quickly being drained away by the Hydro Applicator. With that being said, I think Sucrose Taser has really good potential, Sucrose Hyper Bloom Taser specifically. For the most part, the enemy would usually always have Electro Aura applied onto them since Electro can coexist with Hydro, but Electro can also coexist with Quicken. So no matter which Aura you're currently flipping at, Electro can exist on the enemy. And so that means Sucrose, you usually swore Electro. Conveniently, because Fischl's is like an auto-targeted character, um, Fischl do have some trouble triggering the seed, but fortunately you can swallow the Electro from Sucrose onto the seed, which will then proc the seed. The biggest reason why this is super beneficial is because you build full elemental mastery on Sucrose anyway when it comes to a Taser team because she is a swallow damage dealer. And so when you are also proccing the seed on Sucrose, the damage calculation will be calculated off Sucrose 
Zero's Elemental Mastery, which once again, you already go full Elemental Mastery on. And so you end up doing a really good amount of Hyper Bloom damage to a single target. And this make Taser team have really, really solid single target potential on top of the fact that it is already a really good AoE team. So Zero's Hyper Bloom does have really, really promising potential at the current moment. In order to avoid aura flipping, what you can do is to use a slow Hydro Applicator like Kokomi instead, where she doesn't apply that much Hydro so you can maintain a Danjo aura. The problem here is, of course, the slower you apply Hydro, the less Bloom you get, which means your Hyper Bloom are just less effective. But on top of the fact that there just isn't like good form option for this team at the current moment, which makes team drafting very, very awkward. For example, let's look at, look at this team, which is Fischl, Kokomi, and then your Danjo characters. There isn't really a lot of suitable fourth option here. Doing a second Hydro character doesn't really make sense because then you will start applying too much Hydro. Um, Pyro character is kind of out of the questions. A second Daniel character could work, but it's a really big waste of a team slot since again you then have two Danjo characters just applying Danjos and not doing much else and it's like 50% of your power budget within your team drafting. You can also bring a second Electro character like Kuki but then at this point you're basically playing Quicken because you have a Quicken aura and you're just spamming a bunch of Electro attack to do aggravate and so your Hydro end up not being very useful since you're better off just doing your normal Quicken team here instead of having a Hydro characters to kind of grieve your reaction a bit. I think the biggest problem with Bloom in general is just that it takes too much step processes to get a okay result. For what it is worth, in order to trigger Bloom, you have to make sure you apply enough Hydro as well as enough Dandro since these elements get consumed whenever you do trigger a Bloom. Once you do trigger a Bloom though, you create a seed and you have to make sure a third element, either Electro or Pirate, will hit the seed directly, which can then trigger the Hyper Bloom or Burgeon reaction. So in total, you're looking at around a three or four step process in order to actually trigger the reaction. In comparison, let's look at how Quicken works. Where Quicken, you just have to apply Danjo and Electro periodically once every like 10 seconds and you can just spam your Danjo and Electro attack and you can ensure that pretty much every single time your Electro or Danjo attack come off ICD, they will benefit from the Quicken effect. It's a very straightforward effect to use. You just spam your attack where for Hyper Bloom and Burgeon, you have to go through this five step process and hope you benefit from it, which is why it just currently very limiting. The real reason why Bloom is just not very effective in my personal opinion right now, it's just again, the two Danjo applicator are just not very good. For example, these two characters both don't do a lot outside of just applying Danjo, which is a dramatic cost in terms of opportunity cost. Um, but more importantly is that these two characters both don't have very excellent uptime when it comes to Danjo application. For example, Danjo main characters Elemental's burst only lasts for 12 seconds while it has a 20 second cooldown. So you have 8 seconds of gap where it is not consistently applying Danjo. At the same time, what makes it a little worse, especially when it comes to playing like Burgeon with Danjo main character, is that if you apply Pyro onto the Elemental burst by accident, it will kaboom. And so you have to be extremely careful when it comes to how you apply all your elements, as if Bloom don't already require you to do 10 different steps to actually utilize it already. Now, of course, this video doesn't cover like every single team come out there. And then there are some jank teams that other people have tried. But I hope this video gives a basic idea about some of the potential problem about Danjo that we are running into, especially when it comes down to the practical use cases of some of these reactions, as well as how it is very limiting on its team drafting processes when it comes to like what character it can work with. And um, for the most part, we're just waiting for a better Danjo applicator or better character that will work with Danjo reaction being designed in their mind. But to be honest, I think that is very reasonable as we're just in the very first patch of Sumeru, nevertheless the very first day. So there could be a lot of discovery we still have to do. And as Mihoyo released more characters that are designed it with Danjo reaction in mind, um, surely we can utilize some of these reactions better. Obviously, a lot of these old characters were not designed with Danjo reaction in mind, and so it just doesn't really work that way. Now, some of you might be wondering what about Tanari, and I'll do that in a separate video since he's more like a main DPS rather than a Danjo applicator, and so he kind of works more differently. So as always, if you're not subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. For what it's worth, I don't think Danjo is like terrible. It is certainly limiting and it might not be 
as exciting as people were thinking. And um, before it is worth, Danjo does open up some new path, especially when it comes to playing electro characters. For example, like Kaching could actually be played really well now in the official team. Aggravate is really, really solid. Electro team could be really strong. And the biggest thing I like about Aggravate team is that you don't actually have to care about how to play the team when it comes down to its elemental application. When you're playing team like Hu Tao or Xing Chiu's, you have to think about, oh, I need to use Xing Chiu's first because I have to apply Hydro first so that I can vaporize with my Hu, uh, Hu Tao Pyro elemental skill. Um, on the other hand, Aggravate team are just so easy and are so simple to play. There isn't a concept of what element you have to apply first. There isn't really a huge concept of why and how you have to apply your element. As long as you are just applying dandros and electros in a respectable amount of periodic time you are good to go you just spam your attack and it just work out and that's why i really really enjoy aggravate you it's like it's actually like impossible to fuck up it's unbreakable it's actually like unbreakable with that being said that will be the end of the video i hope you guys enjoyed the video i tried to make this video a little bit more about why certain things doesn't work instead of what worked really well because i think that aspect is often not talked about people always like to talk about this work that work but nobody really talk about what doesn't work and why it doesn't work and if that helped you then let me know and again thank you guys for watching the video as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you all with more danger testing maybe there will be brand new discovery that proved me wrong